catch up with your kids' tenders. Okay. They want ranch, and then you just need a kid's quesadilla, right? Okay, is it busy right now? We're actually not super busy right now, but we're not used to doing this many takeout orders, so it's a bit of a learning curve. This could have been a restaurant anywhere two years ago, a takeout assembly line. There are now more than a thousand confirmed cases of coronavirus here in Michigan. All restaurants, coffee shops, all ordered by Governor Whitmer to stop normal business to prevent the spread. The surge in hate crimes against Asian Americans only getting... A town of 3,000 surrounded by the flatlands of Michigan's thumb, two hours north of Detroit up M53. Now, a documentary film named after that town. In Bad X, a family restaurant called Rachel's. When COVID hit, some of Rachel's family came back to help. Daughter Jacqueline and son David, U of M grad and filmmaker. If you're not an essential business, you need to close and you need to protect your employees. When making Bad X, I always said I wanted to like share my family's story even before I started shooting it. And I always thought I would share this story of a Cambodian refugee. Show it to the camera like this. They have to have that talk of unemployment. And, you know, a Mexican-American woman, like these two individuals who built their American dream here in Bad X, Michigan. Is a picture of Rachel with our children, Jacqueline and Michelle, our baby at the time, David. Here's the three kids standing in front of the front entrance. Didn't take a whole lot to keep the children happy. Just tell them this is going to be our future donut shop. The donut shop would become Rachel's restaurant. You know, when I moved back home from New York during COVID and just picked up my camera and began filming. David, why are you filming me right now? You got a lot of free time. David having the camera in his hands is not something new. It was something that, you know, he's always walking around with his camera. But to get like moments that were kind of, you know, very personal. FedEx is probably a lot safer than New York right now. It's probably a good thing you guys got out when you did. But it's crazy to think that literally one week ago we were on a cruise ship. And now, like, things are, like, starting to get really bad. The filmmaker's family willing participants for the most part. I think he was also, like, very respectful um, because when I did really ask him to stop, he, he did. But he also didn't sometimes, too. So I don't know. It's just, I guess that was, that's what makes a really good film. We are. Yes, we, we will are. wear masks, glasses, gloves. We know. We're not stupid, Jacqueline. You have high blood pressure. Three-fourths of the people that have died, three-fourths. The way this documentary, you know, came together, it was very unexpected. I had no plans or intention of making a documentary. It just, that's just the way it unfolded, so. I was taking orders, Jacqueline. You're wasting more time. No, you are, Mom. The film has shown everybody, not just in this town, but everywhere across the country, even in the world, what a family going through. The carry out, dine out option is still something that is available to people. This is an essential service, which is the feeding of the people of our state. Obviously out of everybody's control. It reminds me of when we literally, like we're just struggling to survive, trying to make money off of donuts. Through Bad Acts, we relive 2020 all over again, our lives during lockdown. The film, a collective history for all of us, like when one Detroit checked on Roseville restaurant owner Steve Morse, who'd been checking in regularly with the governor. Well, what do you think she's gonna do? When can customers eat in again? COVID cases up, will she shut him down again? At One Detroit, we heard the fear and uncertainty over in Clawson. We're all scared that we're gonna run out of money we're scared that people are not going to come in. We're scared that too many of them are going to try to come in. I wear um, a mask and a shield while I'm teaching. The masks and the politics that came with them. Well, I did wear, I had one on before. I wore one in this back area, but I didn't want to give the press the pleasure of seeing it. It was the same year George Floyd was killed by Minneapolis police. I'm Mandy Wright. I'm live right now. Right next to the Marriott, police are in riot gear, pushing protesters back. Night after night in Detroit, rallies, skirmishes, arrests. There's a line of protesters making a human change. So
so many other Black Lives Matter protests that summer in the suburbs, even in conservative bad acts, a memorable scene in the documentary. I feel like one of the reasons why my parents were able to make the restaurant successful is because they assimilated in the way that people expect them to. Come to work, get your stuff done, don't open your mouth, don't say too much, make sure you don't speak up too loud. My parents are good at biting their tongue, but I don't think I can be that way. It's so weird having this happen in this environment. Like, I'm more comfortable, I guess, in Ann Arbor at a Black Lives Matter protest versus being in Bad X at a Black Lives Matter protest. In the 2016 uh, election, I voted for Donald Trump. I had been surrounding myself with very conservative Republican people, families, friends. And it took me a really long time to realize what type of a person he truly is. I really dug deep into my soul and thought, I can be my own person. This will be the first step that I've taken publicly. I'll be able to look back on it one day and tell my children, you know, it takes every ounce of your soul to stand up for what's right even if your family doesn't agree with you. You know, a couple of small incidents that we have seen in the film, you know, during the uh, Black Lives Matter uh, protesting with my daughter, my very outspoken daughter, Jacqueline, get tangled up, should I say it, with those three men that are, you know, fully armed, come in there, try to intimidate everybody. At the time, you know, it seems like, wait a minute, the town judging us in the wrong way to say, you know what, you kid the one that started a problem with these armed men. No, these not an armed men. These are just a man that have a really bad intention. Now, if anybody in the town support those men, they have some problem. And it make me really proud when I, when I see that film, that my children actually stand up you know, again, for what is right and what is wrong. Chun Si's immigration story at the forefront of the film. I close this fucking play down and burn it right down. Exactly, just out of spite because you're a child. That's right. The stress of the pandemic, but how much is connected to the trauma suffered a half century ago escaping the Cambodian killing fields? This is the last place that I saw my father. Despite it all, Chun and his family thrive in 2020. You'll need to watch to the end as they look back with gratitude to the people in their town. Honestly, our town supported all of our restaurants, not just ours, but okay, all of them. Hello, Rachel. So Bad Eggs, how may I help you? I cannot thank our community enough for that. I mean, they helped all of us. Rock, man. It's usually like coastal stories, right, of like what's going on in New York or LA. But with Bad X, like it's a whole other part of America that so many people in our country are a part of that community. And so when you're seeing our family go through this, you have to think about all the other families in all these other small towns that are just like Bad X across the Midwest. People seeing their own experiences represented on the big screen through our family.